Item Number SCP-1514 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-1514-1A is contained in Secure Bunker SCP-1514-1B status is to be monitored at all times, and any fluctuation of its homeostatic state beyond standard deviations is to be reported immediately. SCP-1514-1A's components are not to be tampered with, and any action beyond routine inspection of the device is to be met with immediate termination. Exactly one Level 2 or higher personnel with an appropriate engineering background is to inspect these components once every 20 minutes to ensure their continued function. Should said personnel breach protocol, the Batrachotoxin collar equipped to them must be remotely activated. No personnel are permitted to enter SCP-1514-1A's containment chamber outside of scheduled or emergency inspections. While SCP-1514-2 largely isolate themselves from public awareness, Foundation agents within all major astronomical associations are to detect and disguise any instance of their discovery. Should the signal being transmitted by SCP-1514-1A cease, whether by the destruction of SCP-1514-1A itself or otherwise, Procedure 083 Oniger must be implemented. Failure to do so is likely to result in an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. Description SCP-1514 is a nuclear deterrent system developed by in association with the United States government in 1983. Its development and deployment was disguised by the publicly announced Strategic Defense Initiative SDI, despairingly known as Star Wars, which was put forth by then-President Ronald Reagan during the same year. Officially, SCP-1514 is known as sdi system z and numerous components of it were developed by legitimate SDI research and development groups, namely Project Excalibur- Known records indicate that the system was functional from 1980 to 1980, at which point the artifact's malfunctions and subsequent investigation by the Unusual Incidents Unit UIU, Federal Bureau of Investigation brought SCP-1514 to the Foundation's attention. SCP-1514-1A is a 1.5m by 0.9m by 0.6m device comprised mainly of steel. Various instruments along its exterior display the homeostatic state of an entity, SCP-1514-1B, currently residing inside the device. SCP-1514-1A is powered by an unknown internal source, and contains what is believed to be a sophisticated life support system utilizing an unidentified dark red liquid. Due to the inherent risk of tampering with the device see below, details regarding SCP-1514-1B and the life support system are unclear or speculative. The remaining instruments belong to an interface system designed to input and receive data from SCP-1514-1B. Information on SCP-1514-2 is limited, and has thus far only been provided by documentation received from the UIU and see document SCP-1514-RM4 for details. However, it is confirmed that SCP-1514-2 are a series of satellites currently in orbit around Earth. Superficially they resemble the satellite, with what is believed to be an array of twelve tactical X-ray laser or Zaser devices attached to the interior side. The solar panels visible in SCP-1514-2 instances are reported to be fake, as the satellite's propulsion and weapon systems are powered by an alternative, anomalous source. Design specifications indicate the Zaser system was originally to be utilized for disabling intercontinental ballistic missiles ICBMs, though targeting algorithms do exist for ground-based targets. SCP-1514-1A generates an anomalous radio transmission once every hour broadcasting to the nearest SCP-1514-2 instance. This transmission cannot be deterred or disrupted through any known method, including Faraday cage structures. According to the documentation provided by Failure to receive this signal for a period lasting longer than 36 hours constitutes the immediate and autonomous implementation of the Coronet contingency, causing all SCP-1514-2 instances to fire upon their preset land-based targets. Due to the scope of the Coronet contingency, which was engineered by 
and is far more extensive than was intended by the U.S. government. This event has been deemed a probable XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. Information from has indicated that several components of SCP-1514 were developed by through CIA Project between 1960 and 1960, though it is unknown what the original purpose of these components were. See document SCP-1514-RM27 for details. SCP-1514-1A's interface is currently unresponsive to input rendering all manual offensive and defensive capabilities of SCP-1514-2 defunct. This malfunction also prevents deactivation of the coronet contingency. This danger was the impetus for contacting the Foundation and the subsequent Foundation custody of the artifact. While SCP-1514-1A is unresponsive to input, it has been observed to generate text messages via the control panel monitor. Document SCP-1514-0, Clearance 4 1514 required. Can you hear? I'm happy. Are the stars pretty? Document SCP-1514-RM4, Recovered UIU Documentation. Audio log of item number 258 examination. Location: USAF installation at Groom Lake, Nevada. Forward. Item number 258 is an unused satellite developed by Project Excalibur and identical to those deployed by SDI System Z. This examination is being performed with the objective of obtaining information pertinent to the understanding and repair of item number 234, the core component of SDI System Z. R and N are mechanical engineers with a background in space exploration. E and A are agents overseeing the procedure. Begin log. R. There's no conduit from these panels. Are they just for show? E. Most likely. We are not sure as of yet what it is powered by. N. Opening superior side access point. A metallic sound is heard, accompanied by a grunt from N. N. What and all? R. What? Is that blood? N. No. Blood is brighter colored and more opaque and… A sharp inhalation is heard. N. It smells like iron. This doesn't… A. What does it smell like? N. I have no idea. R. Here, take a sample to the lab. R. Roger. R is heard leaving the room. Wet, wrestling sounds are heard. N. Components 23, 24, 27, missing. Unsurprising. All the solar conversion components are gone. There's a lot of wiring, much more than there should be. Looks like fiber optics, all pale gray, tightly bundled. Wait a moment. There's no charge. It's certainly not electrical. It's unusually warm in here. E. Internal temperature? N. 37 degrees centigrade. A. What's that in? N. 98 degrees. A. Odd. N. That is odd. There's really an enormous amount of wiring in here, and I barely see any of the original components. Wait a moment. E. What? N. I found… something. It's not a component I recognize, but… Jesus. What is this? The sounds of rummaging can be heard. N. It's in a regularly shaped container. I'm not sure what it's made of, but it's not metallic. The wiring seems to congregate on this object. A. How big? N. Maybe 25 cm across at the widest, 15 cm at the thinnest. It's fairly light. A. What? N. It's warm. A. Same temperature? N. Warm. A. N? E. N? Are you okay? N. Are you warm enough? E. N. What? N. Sleep now. Warm and cozy. A. Fuck. E. Get him out of here. Now. Get him out now. Open. Loud thrashing is heard. N appears to be crying or laughing. It is unclear. A. Oh god. 
E. Get them out of him. A. They're getting longer. E. That's not fiber optics. N. E. Who is he talking about? A. Cut the wires. End log. Document SCP-1514 RM-27. Recovered Project M Documentation. Journal of Dr. B Entry The Russians are very proud of their telepathy research division, but they lack vision. They fail to respect the power of human emotion, but they'll see that power soon enough, just as soon as our work on empathic resonance is complete. Thanks to the materials provided by We should have this project completed ahead of schedule. Mind over matter. Heart over mind. Entry The first two subject batches exposed to the serum were utter failures. The first all died from cerebral hemorrhaging. The second group went into encephalopathic delirium. Our consensus is that the adult human nervous system is too inflexible, too resistant to change. That being said, further experiments on the current subject pool are likely to be fruitless. Still developing systems, preferably those still in gestation, are likely to be ideal. We shall requisition more appropriate subjects from Entry Two of our five subjects miscarried. After confirming that their carriers had no reaction from the serum, we had them terminated. We've lowered the dose volume on the remaining subjects, hopefully to mitigate the potential damage. Entry Ordered us to retrieve one subject for closer inspection. Caesarean section of Subject 4 was successful. However, in the aftermath of the procedure, the carrier regained consciousness. I don't understand. Why did the carrier demonstrate a reaction to the serum, but not the fetus? Seems excited by the news. I can hardly say I am as well. We lost five personnel from the incident. We've had the carrier placed in a chemical coma, hopefully to prevent any further… Entry Clark went nuts today. He tried to break into Subject 4's room, claiming he wanted what was his. I had no idea what to make of it at first. But then I saw the logs, and noticed he'd been monitoring Carrier 4 for the last two days. Empathic resonance is more volatile than we estimated. A telepathic event from an unconscious individual? We've barred all access to the Carrier's room, and reinforced the walls with provided by But we have no countermeasures if another energy projection event like during the C-section occurs. Entry We're fucked. Is going to shut the entire project down. Has ordered us to continue our work while they handle the situation, but we haven't gotten anything, anything, out of Subject 4. The other subjects and carriers have all been terminated. They'd show no response and were little more than a financial black hole. My staff are losing their minds, and I'm tired of cleaning up after them. Entry Entry all of our materials have been moved to Lab B, and the remains of Carrier 4 have been locked in a casket. Though given that it can still detect what was happening to Subject 4 when its entire room was lined with it, I doubt it makes much difference. We obtained a neurocell sample of the Carrier shortly after its termination. Once the research methods of replicating the sample, for what I have no idea. Subject 4 is stable. No attempts at a biopsy are planned or even permitted, not after the last attempt resulted in and half our staff. Entry They were playing us right from the beginning. Colin was the one who suggested we use fetuses, and he was one of their agents the whole time. They knew exactly how unstable empathic resonance was and how dangerous this project would be, so they let us do the dangerous work. The bond between a mother and child. Of course it would provoke the strongest reaction. A telepathic link that can't be deterred by any means. A mother trying to protect her son. The readings we got from the last event are unlike anything we could have predicted. Has taken Subject 4 and the cell sample of its carrier. They're going to continue with the cell replication on their own. I understand now. The subject was never the weapon. It was only the trigger. The carrier was the weapon. They think they know everything, but they didn't see what happened during the last incident, 
and I have no plans on telling them. They think that just because Subject 4's growth is arrested that it won't develop sentience, but even they underestimate this power. It won't merely relay orders forever. It will begin choosing what to relay, or ignoring them altogether, maybe giving orders of its own.